Peut-être. Ah ouais, ça y est. Un, deux. Il les allume, il les allume. Il n'y a rien ouais. touché, on ne touche ouais. rien. Ouais. I'm sorry, but it's not the right one. No, thank you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm very happy to be here today at this Mountain Planet show in Grenoble, which is my hometown. I'm really impressed that so many people chose to come and listen to this masterclass. Uh, so first of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Marie-Hélène Boissieu. CEO of a marketing communication strategy firm I created in 2006. And we have been working with ski resorts for over 10 years. I would like to thank you, the exhibition manager of Mountain Planet, Laurette Bonzi, and our media partner, Mountain Leader, to trust me holding this masterclass. Well, let's talk about our topic today. How does the environmental fall into the strategy for mountain resorts? Um, first of all, I just wanted to start with one figure. 2.7 degrees plus 2.7 degrees according to the latest assessment of the Auvergne-Rhône-Alpes Regional Climate and Energy Observatory between 1960 and 2020 observed in all mountain regions by the EPCC, that is to say the Jack in French. This warming leads to earlier snow melting in the spring and accelerates the melting of glaciers, which modifies the seasonal flow of rivers. Each of you in the heart of ski 
results can see this on a daily basis. Moreover, the environmental dimension is at the heart of the concerns of the mountain industry. So how do the sector players meet the challenge of climate change throughout the world? Let's see their approach and their action as far as their environmental responsibilities are concerned. So let me introduce to you to our guest stars who have come all over the world. Isn't it Rick and Titi? And, um, would you be kind enough to give them a round of applause, please? Thank you. So on my left, Titi Rodling from Sweden, SLAO, which is the Swedish Ski Area Industry Association. Welcome, Titi. Rick Schmitz from NSAA, National Ski Areas Association from the USA. Good afternoon, Rick. Good afternoon. Thank you. Wow, great supporters. Yeah, your fan club. Huh? <laughs> so Pierre, Pierre Voller, mayor of Les Ors. Everybody knows Les Ors here, I think. Yes, yes. The, the best one in the world. Yes. <laughs> He's also the creator and leader of Smart Altitude. Good afternoon, Peter. Then Dominique Tillot, CEO of Compagnie des Alpes, well known for its 10 ski resorts in the Alpes, La Plagne, Les Arcs, Tignes, Val d'Isère, Méribel, Les Menuires, Serre Chevalier, and moreover, which makes Compagnie des Alpes one of the world's largest mountain players. Good afternoon, Dominique, and thank you to be Good there. Afternoon. Give them an applause. Okay, thank you. So first of all, we are going to start with environmental issues and concrete examples. Um, I would like to start with the ladies. Yes, thank you, Titi. Um, Titi, you are the CEO of Swedish Ski Area Association. You have a background in strategic communication, management consulting, and mega sports events. Former Alpine Olympic, yes and World Cup Sky, you love nature. Can you tell us about your association and what motivated you to set up an environmental strategy, please? Yes, thank you. Our organization consists of 200 members and uh, they're quite different. And the aim is to be safe and to be attractive and also to continuously work with education and also guidance within our industry. And if, when it comes to why, uh, with an uh, environmental strategy, is we live by and out of nature. So we feel a great responsibility to take action, of course. And as you mentioned, the climate crisis is not tomorrow. It's here and it's now. And uh, uh, we can look at it in two different ways. The one is adaption, of course. We need new innovation. You can see a lot of innovations around here today. Uh, and the other one is to cap down on the mission, of course. And Sweden has had high ambitions here to be, the, to, to be the first welfare state to be national, to be fossil free. And uh, we are one of 22 business areas in Sweden that have taken, uh, have a roadmap to become fossil free. The other ones are, are the heavy ones with transport, mining, forest, etc. We are the only one in, uh, when it comes to tourism. Uh, and people's behavior. We work with sustainability, social sustainability, with health and with wellness. So that's, that's really important for us then to have that. Uh, can you give us some example, concrete example, as far as environmental actions you lead? Uh, yes, I can. We have, we have set our strategy in 2016, but we became a member of this, uh, uh, this roadmap action, uh, governmental roadmap action in uh, 2019. And the first things we have done is mark a lot with awareness. We have set up this, this year five different digital educations for all people that work in the industry. And we have it for 
for, for water and energy and for snow management, so snow saving, and also basic knowledge about sustainability. And actually, we have, we're proud to say that we have 3,000 persons of employees and ski resorts in Sweden that have attended this education. It's maybe around 20% of them, so we're happy for that. And the other big thing is to start to measure, to report. Uh, to calculate okay, how, how much, uh, how many uh, liters of diesel you use and electricity to be able to follow that and follow the, the, the change also. Thank you. Uh, Rick, um, can you give us a presentation of the NSAA? Where do you come from exactly? And uh, what motivated you to set up an environmental strategy? Sure. So um... uh, you have. Uh, sorry, beautiful photos, pictures you came with. So I, uh, I, I am kind of wearing two different hats. I own and operate three very small ski areas in the Midwest in the USA, in Wisconsin, um, that are very small feeder ski areas that feed to the larger mountain resorts, and we create skiers. Um, so I do that, and I also am on the NSAA, the National Ski Areas Association Board of Directors, um, for the United States. So the NSAA has a number of programs to promote um, environmentalism and sustainability. One is the Sustainable Slopes Program, um, which is a pledge program that all of our members can sign up to be a part of um, and more of a, a climate pledge to make a, a difference in how we operate our ski resorts. Um, and then the newer program that the NSAA has instituted is called the Climate Challenge, and that's more um, metrics driven using an outside firm to gather all of the data and look at the greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and, and so that's the more involved um, approach to it um, that the NSA is really driving and pushing. The motivation for us in the United States, the motivation is, is mostly internal driven. It's not driven by the government as much. There is definite government regulation and restrictions but that's a little bit different region to region and state to state in the United States. So for us, uh, as an industry, we're trying to be way ahead of the game um, because our industry is greatly impacted by climate change. Um, so to bring it down to more of a, a, a specific example of us, so we're very small resorts. We don't have nearly the capital budget um, for expenditures as some of the very large ski resorts have. And, um, so for us, we need to find projects that make a lot of financial sense to us that can also be good for the environment. Um, and so for us, the biggest thing is snowmaking. Where, where we operate, we get very little natural snow, and we make almost 100% of our snow. And when I purchased the resort 17 years ago and started to do it, we had very old, outdated, inefficient snowmaking systems, which I think is very true for a, a ton of ski resorts around the world. Um, we realized very quickly that it was good for the environment to upgrade the snowmaking system, but also for our business, and it became a, a core to, to what we could do because it, it has made us more sustainable environmentally, but also more sustainable financially in that we can guarantee snow, have a good snowpack, have a longer season, survive the, what seems to be increasing uh, variations in the weather. Um, and so we've spent you know, over the course, and we didn't do it all at once because we're small and we operate on a very tight budget. So we did it over time and invested heavily every year. Most of our capital expenditure budget has been into snowmaking. And so between our three small ski areas, we've spent probably 75% of our capital expenditure budget on snowmaking improvements, um, about $2 million over the last probably 10 to 12 years we've spent on snowmaking. Um, and it's changed our resorts. It's made our outlook a lot better uh, for the future and make our resorts more financially sustainable, but it also has lowered our energy usage substantially because the, the guns that we were using were really, really inefficient. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Um, I would like to turn, me, to, turn to um, Pierre. Pierre, um, you are the mayor of Lesor, CEO of uh, Sam Lesor, founder of pilot of the Okova Forum which is very well known here, president of the community of communes of the Lac de Serponçon, and above all, leader of the European Smart Altitude Program, which started 11 years ago 
and with the Alpstar program, exclusive focus on the Earth. So this awareness of global warming is not new for you. Can you tell us more about Smart Altitude program? Yes, with uh, Smart Altitude, we have continued the work started in the uh, program Alpstar, European program, in liaison with our partners and the three other pilot sites uh, in Italy, Madonna di Campiglio, Switzerland, Verbier, and Slovenia, Krvavets. Uh, we decided to extend the scope beyond uh, resort uh, operations, uh, lifts, uh, snowmaking, grooming, to take into account other aspects uh, of the transition. Um, in particular, we have worked with our partner EDF uh, on the energy regulation of a collective tourist housing, uh, UCPA, UCPA in French. Uh, and we have deployed with SIM05 the Rodsalp Energy Syndicate and network operators and solution provider, um, APIC. Uh, which is in uh, this uh, uh, today and uh, with supervision solutions based on low consumption uh, long range network LP1 for the internet of things like public buildings heating regulation and CO2 control in meeting rooms, classrooms and so on uh, thus with uh, APIC and Veolia we have implemented also uh, measuring and supervision of water management in the resort with Comatelec Shredder we have implemented supervision of public lighting allowing a 50% reduction in electric consumption without affecting the comfort and safety of residents. Um, LESO is also very active uh, on, uh, in the mobility sector with implementation of hybrid XTL shuttles uh, which allow a 90% reduction in CO2 emissions. The same the OSANC, Department of Electricity Di Distribution Authority, has included the Valley Resorts uh, access in its mission to deploy public charging station, station for electric vehicles. Uh, mention should be made uh, for uh, multimodal train shuttling projects and on a wider scale, uh, various uh, valley uh, lift projects in the resorts. Um, don't forget also uh, the local wood energy sector with the replacement of the old boilers uh, in public buildings with pellet boilers uh, using wood pellets, 300 tons per year. Uh, LESO has been keen to build effective partnership with SMEs and uh, inter-municipal associations such as the SIM05. Uh, all these development efforts contribute to strengthening the entrepreneurial fabric and the mountain equipment sector while working to reduce ecological footprint uh, of our facilities. Finally, uh, the resort is committed with its community of common to an ecological transition approach that takes into account the management of energy, water, uh, waste, mobility, and the circular economy. We have to extend the scale, uh, not only at the resort, but the resort with the valley, because all uh, uh, these uh, thematics, uh, uh, energy, water, waste, mobility, uh, are transversal, and uh, we have to develop uh, them uh, in application of new pro project we have, uh, Novaltitude, uh, which is uh, uh, starting. Okay, thank you. I will ask another question afterwards. Uh, Dominique, Dominique Tillo, you have spent 10 years in managerial positions, uh, then general di director of strategy for the SNCF group, then 10 years as chairman of the executive boards of Les Aéroports de la Côte d'Azur group. In June 2021, you were appointed general manager of the Compagnie des Alpes, which includes more than 10 resorts. Um, you have understood the environmental stakes well since the editorial on your website states we have two ambitions for each of our sites to create customer preference for CDR sites and to limit our impact on environment and first of all to reach net zero carbon by 2030. What is at stake at Compagnie des Alpes? Hello everybody. Yeah, actually, this is not part of our strategy. Uh, there are two moral requirements in a societal requirement, which, has, which, which are 
you know, on one, one end is safety at work. It's not the scope of what we're discussing today. And the second one is, uh, is, is to reach the net zero carbon in 2030 at the latest. And don't, this is not a matter of being the boss or being whoever, you know, whoever in the, within the organization. It's a collect individual and collective responsibility we are involved in. So, and then there is a strategy, but strategy is something else. So we decided to, to, to set up that, that new objective for, for 2030, it was last year. And now we just shut up, we just work, we are testing a lot of things. And actually someone, sometimes they are, they are pretty successful, sometimes they are not, so we are not talking about that. But uh, some, sometimes they are, they are pretty successful and then we go for it. Uh, I, I give you an example, probably you saw that very soon in the, in the press that we decided to, to get rid of any fossil energies for our, groomer, for our groomers. This is doable now and to, 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 um, uh, to migrate from, uh, from gasoline and diesel to, uh, uh, to use the, uh, vegetal oils. There is no palm oil, uh, I prefer to say it now. Uh, and and uh, so this is a, a secular, in a, a second life given to, uh, uh, to those uh, vegetal oils. And so we are very focusing. So as soon as now, and for the next uh, winter season, will be no more fossil energies in our groomer on our side. And the end result of that is, is minus 90% in terms of carbon emission and is uh, minus 65% in terms of uh, particles em emission. This is a first step, this is a big step, but actually, actually this is a first step for oh, always the net zero carbon for scope one and two. Now we need to focus on the last 10%, and the last 10% will be reached uh, with, um, the, to move probably uh, and we're gonna try both, we're gonna try, and this is, there is a new one, uh, CM Dupont, the first 100% electrical uh, groomer in the world for Alpine slopes. And actually this is, uh, you can see that on the, on the here on the, in, the, in the Congress. And, um, and so we're gonna test next winter half electricity and a little bit with H2. And we will see by using them and testing them in real operational conditions, we're going to make a selection. Today, we are between six and seven hours for 100% electrical groomer. So we're going to see if it works, if we get a little bit more time, and then it could be a solution. Uh, for instance, we are in charge of the urban transportation for Tignes and Val d'Isère, the wonderful resort, ski resort. And actually, we decided for the bus operation, we decided to move to electricity. It works very well, and uh, so there is no need to, go to, to, to get somewhere else. So it's doable. The technology already exists. It has a cost, probably not with an immediate uh, rentability, profitability at the moment, you can see in the Excel spreadsheet, but actually it will be a deferred uh, profitability and as a long-term player we need to consider that there is a big value is in, that, in that deferred profitability. So there is a path to reconcile the, um, the profitability and the path to the to the, to, 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 the, to the reduction of our carbon footprint. You explained me, Dominique, uh, later that um, you, you've signed an, a partnership with Office National des Forêts. Can you tell m us more about it? Yeah, yes. well, the, the big part of the vast majority is to reduce. Hmm. And then for the end, for the last percentage to reach the net zero and the real net zero carbon, we will have a, a, a local, local sequestration of the, of, the, of the local residual emission, carbon emission. So it's doable, and so we work a lot of, um, uh, we spend a lot of time with Office National des Forêts, and actually to, to, to create the condition in view to, to, uh, to orchestrate, I would say, that uh, local sequestration and to be back. It's always for scope one and two. Uh, and then for the scope three, we, had, we are trying to contribute for that. So we reestablished the, the train service between London and the, and, the, and the ski resort in Tarentaise. Hopefully, we're going we're gonna to enlarge 
uh, that footprint so that uh, that footprint for the scope three in the in the coming month but we are we are really you know focused on scope one and two to delete fully delete our carbon footprint and obviously at the same time to to collaborate with um, with different partners to in view to um, to to have a positive impact on the scope three thank you dominique um for each other um can you tell me each uh, for which action are you proud of titi <laughs> uh, yes i can i can do that we are uh, pretty proud of that we have been changing from diesel to, to biofuel diesel and then during four years cut our emissions in, in the slope with half. And also we are proud of that we are introducing electric snowmobiles now, the first ones in, in the world. We use a lot of snowmobiles in Sweden and they are finally, finally coming. But we are also uh, regarding communication, we think we are pretty bad at that. I think you are much better in North America to, to tell the stories. We think it's really important to tell the positive stories because people uh, tend to media uh, cover negative news a lot. That's their job to review. Uh, and so if you ask people in Sweden if the emissions have increased or decreased the last couple of years, they will say they have increased, but they have not. Thank they you. have decreased. So it's important to have the, the positive stories uh, as well. Thank you, Titi. Rick, which action are you proud of? Yeah, so I, I think two parts of that on, on the personal level. I'm, I'm really proud of, you know, the, the job our teams have done with, with our improvements on the snowmaking side. And then also um, we've been upgrading our night lighting. We all have night skiing at our ski areas. And so we've been Converting that, we're in the middle of about a three-year process to convert all of our night lighting to LED, which will um, cut our energy usage in half um, right out of the gate, and the payback on that is, is very, very short. Um, so that's, that's on that level. On, on the NSAA level, um, I think I'm really proud of the organization as a whole and the job they're doing to communicate to members and all of our member ski areas on what is important um, for sustainability, the different programs that they're offering, recognizing um, the job that ski areas are doing. Uh, we have a sustainability awards that they give out every year for, for members that are doing a really exceptional job of it, um, as well as the NSA has a grant program that is offering um, financial incentives and, and just flat out grants for people that are making, for ski areas that are making improvements. So. Thank you, Rick. Pierre, which action are you proud of? Okay, um, the solution uh, we build in for the energy management, we have reduced 20% uh, consumption in, air, in electrical energy, 25% on the, the cost, and 100 ton CO2 uh, reduced. And uh, we are building an uh, hydroelectricity uh, uh, station. Uh, we will produce uh, four gigawatt uh, each year in two years. And the uh, next step is uh, 10 gigawatt in uh, five years uh, for consumption of the operating uh, for the, the resort of uh, uh, eight uh, gigawatt so we will produce uh, more than we consume uh, and also we have uh, developed the um, turnover uh, in uh, uh, we, um, <laughs> sorry estate uh, uh, because uh, we have uh, put uh, uh, bike park, uh, very attractive. Uh, it's in the top we'll three. We'll speak later about impact on this ecosystem. Yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah, and uh, after we uh, we develop, uh, we have doubled the uh, the turnover. Uh, yes. In the, uh, in okay, we'll speak later about it. Ah, sorry. Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Peter. Uh, Dominic. Which action are you proud of? Uh, Actually, it's not about. I would I would say that it's not about technology, and I'm very proud of the the collective intelligence. I would say and the the, the shared awareness among my teams, because this is in a collective responsibility, but this is also an individual collective responsibility. 
and, and the fact that every single personnel within our organization, every single personnel within the, you know, that we have a, a concession, like, you know, let's say, let's put it that way, like a concession at the ESP. And so every single personnel within the, 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 the local authorities uh, are, are aware of that. So we, it's very easy when, on the individual standpoint and in the collective standpoint, we are, we are all aligned. And uh, so we'll succeed in some stuff, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, fail in some stuff, but we keep on trying. And this is uh, that, that spirit that we are sharing with our local authorities, which is, uh, and obviously within the organization, is the key to success. So there is no doubt, it's not about technology, it's about willingness to do it. Thank you, keep on trying. Thank you, can applause, thank you. <laughs> Um, so let's move to the second part, um, impact on the ecosystem and KPI. Oh, before. Uh, um, I would like to turn to Titi. Um, Titi, how do you communicate on the subject to your customers, uh, your partners and the ecosystem? Uh, as I mentioned just before, I think we're quite bad at that. Uh, at the moment, we, we're starting to, to be better, I think, to, to have this climate report that we are making now under this fall. The first one will help us a little bit, because then we can also compare with, with other, like, swimming holes, ice hockey arenas. We have figures and facts. Uh, we are quite afraid of communicating, uh, afraid of hearing that we are sort of greenwashing, so you don't tell the good things because you're afraid that you are not safe in all, all areas. Uh, so we have a lot to learn there, I think. But, but it's also important for us, we focus now in the first phase a lot on, on the, the slopes and uh, the lifts, but we know that 80% of the emissions come from travel, from the guest travel. Uh, so that is an important part for us as well, to, to keep on working with that, working with the, the behavior. Uh, so that's in, interesting. But I also want to mention uh, regarding renewable energy, that we are also proud of that, but that's, we have help from the nature there in Sweden because we have a lot of wind and water. So there we are almost 100% already today with uh, renewable energy uh, at the ski resort. So that's, that's good. Um, have you noticed uh, some impact on the image of the de destination ab amongst your country? Uh, an impact uh, among the destinations or your, or your, in your country? Mm. You mean the bad if it's... Yes, uh, uh, yeah. yes uh, definitely uh, there is. It's like, for, for now, it's the forest. What should we have the forest for? We, we need it for biofuel, we need it for, for houses, but we still need it to, to be there and grow as well, uh, to keep the nature safe. So that's, what's one, that's one thing that's important. And we need a lot of biofuel, and then we need uh, batteries. So it's also, we need minerals then, and mining, and that's also a battle. That's on the, the big, big scale, of course. Uh, uh, but I think it's, I think uh, totally we are, the awareness is, is fine. I think people want to do, make action and we would love to, to help them. That's, that's our aim, to help all the ski resorts also to make good, good actions together in this area. Thank you, Titi. Rick, what about the impact on your ecosystems? You told me earlier that you made a lot of savings. Yeah, so we definitely, you know, for, for me, I think uh, one of the most important things of good environmental action is there needs to be a return on investment um, of some kind or it's, it's not going to change because not every business can afford to spend far more than it would cost to take the maybe more environmentally friendly alternative. Um, so I, I think for us, we, we look at every project and we always want to take the sustainable approach if there is a more sustainable option. Um, but it needs to be a shorter return on investment. It, if it's gonna cost five times as much, it might not be economically feasible to take that path. So, so for us, I think it, it really means a lot that 
there's a quick turnaround. And I think that comes through a lot of technology and, and a lot of innovation. And so for us, the technology and the innovation in snowmaking that's happened over the last 20 years um, has made that snowmaking system so much more efficient than it was. Um, I don't have an exact number on it, but 60% of our power usage at our three resorts is from snowmaking. And when we can make snow um, in maybe a third of the time that we could before um, using uh, power, um, that's a huge substantial savings for us. Thank you. Pierre, um, overall, this environmental strategy also had a significant impact on the resorts turnover, but also on the whole ecosystem in the valley. Can you tell more about it? Uh, yes, uh, Les Ors is uh, one of the major resorts in the Southern Alps, benefiting from an altitude and uh, an exposure that allow us to envisage the sustainability of the ski model until uh, 2050. We are today uh, uh, covering of the, the tracks is 54%. Uh, we are going to 70%. And uh, we have uh, to um, develop our models to, to guarantee a sustainable and economical successful mountain. We are diversifying the, the range. Uh, I said we offer in particular uh, for the summer attractiveness uh, and uh, season wings. Um, and we have uh, today um, doubled uh, the, the summer turnover in five years. Um, new activities put in place, great success. Uh, with the pass, we can uh, have all the, the, the activities on the pass for 39 euro uh, on, a week. Uh, and uh, every people get the, the lifts to go to, to the, the top mountain and to, uh, to have a randonnée. Uh, and uh, so uh, we have um, uh, doubled this activity with the pass, and it's very important uh, for us. Uh, yes, we have to accelerate the sport and leisure uh, activities uh, other than, than the ski. And today, um, the, the model is based on the ski. Uh, we doubled uh, the turnover, but uh, today uh, it's 90% uh, uh, attached to, to the ski, uh, yes, and, uh, and the snow. But we have to accelerate, so we have project to use uh, new technologies, uh, virtual reality, to uh, um, can check the, the other sports for our customers, and uh, uh, they have to become uh, 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 customers uh, uh, for these uh, new activities. Nice, nice, multi-season activities, yes, nice. Um, Dominique, you have invested 160 million euros in the Alps over the last two years to make life easier for this ski ecosystem. What impacts have you noticed among your customers with regard to your environmental strategy? Well, actually, uh, it worked? Yeah. It's not about communication first. It's about results. It's about evidences. We need to, we set up the objective, then we work. As I mentioned earlier, we get, we, we tested a lot of things. There are a lot of technologies, ideas, new ideas, but at the end of the day, this is our job to select the right technology to reach the, to reach the objective. Now is a result. You know, I would say, checkable, inde independently checked. So we don't want to be caught in a, you know, communication stuff, greenwashing. About. We need to have results and evidences. The rest is communication. We don't care about the communication. And then when you have results, you can show your client that you have real results. And this is about, this is all about chasing gram by gram. Per, per, per ski a day, I would say. Uh, and so, you know, we, we, uh, I, I talk about the, you know, the, the HVO, for instance, the substitute, the ersatz to the diesel. You know, we know, and it will be evidenced, that it will be minus 72%. 
So we know that we can, we can put a number that it could be independently checked. Then this, this has a value. It's not enough. It's not enough. It's not quick enough. But actually, and the, you know, I, I, I said that there is a remaining 10%. So we need to fight for those 10%, so we're going to fight for them. So the issue is that we made the first step, a big step, but actually it's only a first step. We have a lot of areas we can still improve, so we need to chase gram by gram. And this is a collective, once again, a collective and individual responsibility. So uh, at the end, so we will, we, will make, we will make public in our website at the end of this year you know, the trend for the next 10 years was exactly what we are going to do. And once again, gram by gram, only results matters. So, well understood, no communication, but evidence. Thank you. <laughs> Let's move to the third part after the magnific pictures. Um, the key message is, um, Titi, do you think do you think you have strengthened your legitimacy as a player in the management and development of your area thanks to your environmental strategy? Uh, at least I hope that we will. Uh, it's maybe too early to say. We need facts and figures. I, I agree on that. So that we can show actually what we are doing. Uh, so that's important. And if I want to send out a message now as well, it's... Uh, it's, uh, I agree with you, it's, this is a together action, to have not just single action, we need to work together with the political people, with the business owner and as uh, individuals. So it's not even a tango, it's a square dance uh, to make things happen in this matter. And that's what we want, of course. We need it, the world needs it, and, uh, and also the customers, they ask for it, they want the fossil free value chain in this matter. And, and then if I have like the last message, it's like if, uh, if we help the nature, the nature will help us. And I think it's, you have some great examples up there here in France when you try to help the glaciers by, by putting on extra snow and put, putting it together by grooming machines just to don't have it to melt that fast. That's to help nature and then it will help us as well. Are you confident in the future for the few next, for the next five years, or ten years? Uh, yes, for the upcoming years, of course, but we have to work for hard, all of us, and fast. fast. And fast. Yes. Titi, uh, what kind of messages would you like the audience to take home? Yes. Uh, Rick, <laughs> but, but, sorry. <laughs> Rick. <laughs> Rick. <laughs> yeah, so I think kind of to reiterate what I had already talked about, so I think when people think about sustainability and in skiing in general, people think of the largest resorts and the most world renowned. And those are our leaders and those resorts, I think, do an amazing job as a whole for the most part of, of being very environmentally conscious. Um, but I think for true change to happen, it has to happen across our entire industry and even at small ski areas like I own and operate. Um, and for that to happen, the only way that happens because I don't have a couple hundred million dollar capital budget every year like some of the major ski resorts. Um, again, it needs to make financial sense. It needs to be, it's through innovation um, and, and good projects that, hey, even if it costs just a small amount, maybe the return on investment is six years instead of five. Well, that's a number we can deal with. But if it's a 30 year return on investment, that's, that probably is not gonna be a financially sustainable model for us. So I think for real change to happen, it, it comes through all these amazing vendors in this room um, that, are, that are in this trade show to, to make changes that are really going to change um, our industry for the future. Thank you, Rick. Pierre, what kind of messages would you like the audience to take home? Yes, the, the challenge to obtain uh, neutrality carbon in 2050 uh, is very top uh, challenge, yes. And uh, we can 
only obtain this uh, results uh, with uh, dynamic collaboration and transversal. I think it's very important today to uh, uh, collaborate uh, uh, the commune, community of commune, but also the industrial uh, uh, with academic research, uh, with all, all the people. We have done this uh, in a European project, I told you, uh, in a Smart Altitude, but also with the Forum Okova. My brother of Okova is at the first step uh, to here for 18 years. Uh, so um, the collaboration, uh, building uh, tools, uh, tools box uh, uh, to exchange information and together we can go to this uh, uh, challenge uh, for uh, uh, neutrality carbon in 2050. We do it also, I'm vice president of uh, ANMSM, Association Nationale des Meilleures Stations de Montagne. Uh, we had um, some prices uh, uh, to four communes today. Uh, they uh, have uh, put some projects in uh, uh, biofuel, uh, uh, bio waste also. Um, and uh, all, all the subject is very important and we can do it uh, together and uh, we are open and uh, you can uh, uh, contact us uh, maybe tomorrow with uh, Sweden and the uh, USA and France also. So work hard together. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre. Dominique, what kind of messages would you like the audience to take home? There is a definite emergency we all know that, we are all convinced with that, specifically for our industry. Uh, so, you know, the question is very simple, is that do, do we all agree to sacrifice a little bit of our profits to take up that challenge and to face that emergency? So, the answer is yes or no. You know, I'm, I'm very lucky because my teams, my delegating authorities, they said yes. We need to do that. And uh, maybe yeah, once again, it, it, it will not come in, coming in the Excel spreadsheet. But at the end of the day, there is a moral responsibility, individual and collective, to do it. So we have to do it. And we will need to accept you know, a little bit of an impact on our, on our immediate or medium term profitability to improve you know the next generation uh, profitability and also the main the maintenance the existence of our industry thank you uh, we have just one minute left so i would like to ask a question three key words uh, to keep home from this master class please titi together Together, fast, and action. Together, together, thanks, and action. Can I just, Rick. Say, can I just say ditto? I, I like that. I think, yeah, together really matters. I think, it, I think that's a really good takeaway. Pierre, three uh, key words. Collaboration, uh, results, and uh, uh, nature, and uh, human respect. Dominique? Awareness, results. Results, results, <laughs> results. So. Thank you. You can give them an applause, please. <laughs> Whoa, you yeah, have a club and here. So, uh, of course. Enrique, uh, Enrique has the best, you know, fan club. <laughs> 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 No competition here. <laughs> of course, we haven't touched all the subjects of our environmental issues today, but this is a way of starting interest, focusing on the future. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you for attending this masterclass. Thank you to each of you for your participation. Would you please kind enough to applaud again our speakers who have come all over the world and yourself.
Titi, Rick, Pierre, and Dominique, would you please follow me to the Viper stand? And I, for myself, I say you bye bye. And don't forget tomorrow afternoon at two o'clock, you have another meeting on recruiting new customers in the mountains with my colleague. So bye bye and enjoy as much as you can the wonderful mountain planet, the place to be in Grenoble in Alpe Expo. Thank you.